just one second. It's trying to go away. <coughs> Hi everybody, just give me just a few seconds. I'm trying to get this thing going. Welcome. Just one second, ready. Hello everybody out there, welcome. My name is Brian Parker. I am the program manager for the Rolling Res Arts. This is a program of First Peoples Fund. Um, just a little about the Rolling Res Arts. The Rolling Res Arts is a state-of-the-art mobile art classroom, business training center, and mobile bank. The Rolling Res Arts, um, partners with Lakota Federal Credit Union in Kyle, South Dakota, as well as the Heritage Center of Red Cloud Indian School in Pine Ridge, South Dakota. I just wanna thank you for tuning in to the On the Virtual Road with the Rolling Res Arts. This is the second video in this series. Um, also, I just mentioned the Heritage Center at Red Cloud Indian School. Um, this year is their 52nd annual Red Cloud Art Show, and you can find them on Facebook at the Heritage Center at Red Cloud Indian School and redcloudart.show. Our presenting artist tonight has a few pieces in the show this year, so I will turn it over to him. Oh, just one second. I think we had a bit of a technical difficulty. Um, if you didn't hear me, my name is Brian Parker. I'm the program manager of the Rolling Res Arts. Are we okay? Here you. Okay. Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. Like I was saying, I'm the Rolling Res Arts program manager. Um, tonight we have a uh, Wade Patton, who's our presenting and demonstrating artist. Um, go ahead, Wade. Hello, everybody. Um, thanks for joining in this evening. Um, my name is Wade Patton. I'm of Law, Lakota, and I reside here in Rapid City, South Dakota. Um, just to um, give you a brief overview of, um, you know, my framing and background, um, I kind of fell into frame, framing. People just don't become a picture framer, you know, it just kind of happens. And um, I was printing t-shirts for, I don't know, about six years when I first started working and I just needed a change. So then um, word of mouth came around that I needed a change and I decided, you know, um, yeah, I'll try picture framing. You know, I got to be around art. I was doing that art at the time and I just, thought about it too, just a way of um, actually, you know, starting to frame my own artwork, you know, it would give me the know-how and the ins and outs of framing. And so I, when I applied for the job, I knew nothing about framing. I mean, I had, I um, mean, you know, I have some design sense, you know, as far as um, 2D design, you know, graphics, color. So it was just another way of um, expressing, you know, the kind of um, a different kind of art that I wanted to do. And um, so I was framing in a rapid city and then right about a time in my life I needed to um, change, you know, my scenery. So then I moved out to the East Coast. And a funny story too is um, when I, I went to go stay with a friend and they went to Europe for um, three weeks. And when I first got to Boston, I was like, I'm gonna find a job by the time you come back. And if I don't, if I don't find a job, I'm gonna move back to South Dakota. So I hustled, I applied at all the frame shops, 
well, most of them that I, you know, could look up and um, get my way around. So I applied to them. And then um, the day I went to go pick my friend up from the airport, um, just before I got in the car to go get her, I got a call and they said, um, how would you like to work for us? So that's where kind of that whole picture framing thing or interesting story for you. And I, I've been picture framing. I was out there for 12 years. You know, it sounds kind of bad, but I had like, um, I had about six jobs in picture framing, but it was all a step up. Um, in the last place I framed, I didn't know framing existed like this. I mean, it was um, a frame shop that where I just took the work order and took all the ingredients and put it all together. And we framed for um, a lot of galleries in New York City. Um, you know, we framed for galleries in London. Um, I framed for the um, MoMA in New York City. And I would go to these shows and I would look at the framing, you know, oh, we did that, we did this. And my friends would be like, you know, look at the art, but I was always looking at the framing. So yeah, the last place I worked at, um, we framed, you know, all the current contemporary art. Um, anything you saw, like in art news magazines, art in America, I got like a firsthand, um, like my own personal showing of actually seeing that art, you know, and, um, you know, seeing it before other people would see it. So it was, it was, you know, in the beginning, you know, it was great, fantastic, but, you know, it was a job. So I had to just, you know, frame them, get them out the door, get them on the truck. They would go to, you know, delivery in New York City. Um, so yeah, and like I said, that last frame job, I never knew framing existed like that. And we had a lot of top clients. Um, we framed a lot for General Electric. By the way, they have an amazing um, 1800s Plains Indian collection and anywhere from blankets to dolls. And so when I started framing that stuff, you know, I was like, starting to miss home a little bit. And then I, um, we framed a lot of Andy Warhols and um, the, one of the prints of Russell Means came through. And, um, you know, I just looked at these as signs and then Goldman Sachs, they were a huge client of ours and they just moved into a new building down on Wall Street and um, their collection of art and their collection of Native American art was phenomenal. So, I got to see all that stuff firsthand and, um, you know, started to frame all of that. And like I said, it was a job. So like I said, it was just, you know, frame, get done with your job, you know? So, um, but that framing job, I learned so much about framing and it kind of changed my way of thinking about framing. But when I first started framing here in Rapid City, um, I was more on the, custom framing side, you know, designing, being a designer, when people would bring in stuff, they would, um, you know, I would design. So I think that's where my sense of, um, you know, knowing of the color wheel and what works and, you know, my aesthetics for um, framing, that's where it kind of really picked up. And then of course, moving to the East Coast, it was a lot fast paced, bigger designs, bigger frames. So, um, but anyway, so the reason why you frame art, um, I'm just gonna kind of go into that. Um, I'm gonna show you a few things. Um, I can't teach you everything in framing, you know, but for our time right now, for us two dimensional artists, and I'm, you know, I did, I framed like three dimensional things before, but I'm more of a two dimensional um, framer, you know. Um, when you started to get into um, 3D art, it's more of a structural thing. And um, so, yeah, I'm more um, knowledgeable and works on paper. Um, I can stretch a canvas. Um, a lot of the canvases came to us rolled up and then we had to, you know, restretch them and frame them. Um, you know, I framed, you know, round things in the so what you need to do is I'm protecting the art. So then I'd have to cut a round piece of plexiglass. 
you know? So there's always, it introduced me to, again, a world of framing that I didn't know existed. And so um, I'm just gonna, you know, show you some basic framing techniques, um, some things that hopefully you can do, you know, you, you people who do works on paper that you can um, start, you know, the process. Um, I'm gonna teach you some inexpensive ways of how to do framing, some suggestions on how to get things that are not so expensive. Because as, as artists, you know, um, we're always working to, um, you know, we're all, we're working to, you know, make, you know, ends meet, if you will, or pay a bill, or hopefully, you know, you get to a point where, you know, we, you can just do art and take it to a picture framer and have them frame it. And I'm probably the worst. I'm, most artists are framing their own stuff. And so when it comes to my stuff, I take, I know how to frame it, but it just seems like towards it, you know, I can frame other people's stuff better, but for me, I kind of struggle a little bit, but it's just, uh, I get over it and, you know, it's all good. So one thing we do, so we're learning to do some basic framing techniques. I'm gonna show you how to cut a mat. I'm gonna show you how to hinge some artwork. I'm gonna talk about various tools that you can use, um, possibly that you can purchase right away because it'll make your life so much easier. Um, so basically what framing is, is um, you're protecting the art. And one thing I learned um, kind of like in mid, my mid career in framing is to respect the art. So, you know, respect the art too. And so what I'm gonna do is just show you some really quick basic framing things that I framed and just to explain a few things about that. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to go around and turn the phone to give it the appropriate angle for you to see these. So just give me a second. Hello everyone. Um, we had a bit of a technical difficulty at the beginning of this. So for those of you just joining, my name is Brian Parker. I'm the program manager of Rolling Res Arts. Um, the Rolling Res Arts is a state-of-the-art classroom, business training center, and mobile bank. We partner with the Lakota Federal Credit Union in Kyle, South Dakota to offer bi-weekly mobile banking services. And we also partner with the Heritage Center at Red Cloud Indian School for monthly art buying days. And of course, since with what's going on in in our world right now with the pandemic, that's kind of a, put a halt on some of those services, but you can visit those organizations and find out what's going on. That's the uh, Lakota Federal Credit Union and the Heritage Center at Red Cloud Indian School. And this year is the 52nd annual art show at Red Cloud. Um, Wade has a few pieces in the show this year. And so please, log on to the Heritage Center at Red Cloud Indian School to, to see the beautiful artwork in the show this year. And you can find them on Facebook, at the Heritage Center at Red Cloud Indian School and redcloudart.show. So thank you for joining us and Wade, take it away. So I don't know, I'm sure, hopefully you can see this. And this is, um, again, we're, this is a, um, art on board, canvas board, and it's in a floater frame. You can see it's floating and there's a little bit of space. It's recessed back. And the reason it's recessed back is because it's, you're protecting the art. You know, it's not at the same level as the, um, the frame. So it's recessed back a little bit. Therefore nothing will can, um, could damage it, you know, unless you actually want to damage it. But this is a simple frame job, very clean, a nice maple frame. And this is for like framing, like a canvas or a um, board. And there's kind of the back. And this frame is something I framed. It's a photograph and the frame shop that I um, worked at they did a lot of um, refits, which means they bring frames in and they get them reframed. So we had a lot of frames to choose from. 
So I basically would, you know, have free frames to frame, but they're nice quality. Um, I used a piece of foam core as a mat board to give it some depth because they're like three sixteenths and then that's just something. And then that's the back of it. And so what I'm going to do now, that's just a couple of samples of framing. And what I'm going to do now is actually kind of walk you through the process of designing a piece. And we're going to look at a piece that I designed, that I just finished. And just to show you some different framing options for it. Um, so this is a piece of ledger art. Can you see it, Brian? piece of ledger art that I just finished. And I had a um, virtual show. And what I did is put them in um, little plastic corners. So that way, if um, somebody did purchase it, they can take it to their local framer. And what that does is they just slide in there and hold your piece, you know, so it doesn't move. So if you were to bring this into a frame shop, take it out of there for you. I'm just going to show some quick framing options. You know, you have all these matte samples, and I normally like to use the color of the paper. <laughs> nice. So I'll use this. And what I normally do when I do my art is float the art. Give us a nice space. And then sometimes what I'll do is take another mat, the same color, this is close to, and build a mat around that. And sometimes you can add like a nice little accent color. You know, picking up on this color a little bit. And just do a little hint of color. and put it down like this. And what I would probably do is raise these mats up just to add some depth. So just to show you like something like that. And then that gives you an idea for the matting. Always oh, start out with the matting first. And just showing you some different framing options. Um, this is a frame that can bring in the, the color of the teepees. This is more of a more of a custom framing job. You know, you're framing them for people's, you know, apartments, living rooms, offices. There's, I like this little frame. It looks um, a little antique. And I would take this away. This here, and frame it like this. So that totally adds a totally different look. And with that, give an idea. These are also nice. They're like a nice little fillet. Normally you put them inside of a frame and you frame like this. But I always like to add them, put them inside of a mat. I always like to add them into a frame. It just sparks a little bit more interest and you know, gives a totally different look. Take that away and add that. So you can see like this design, designs, um, you know, there's so many possibilities of, you know, designing custom framing, like this little black one, you know, just something simple. You know, has, yeah, so there's so many different frames. When you go into a frame shop, you're kind of overwhelmed, but you know, that's what your, the designer, the framer, you know, works through a process with you. And then you become, you know, then you trust your neighborhood framer. So it's always trusting about trust, you know, protect your art, do the best thing that you can for the art. So that's just a quick little design um, tutorial, if you will. So then what I'm gonna do, So we have that. 
And then something for us who are, um, you know, we're thinking about, you know, what can we do? How can we um, have our work presentable? What can we do for, um, you know, when we sell a piece of work? So what I usually do, if I, um, you know, they, they have these, you can't, you can't frame everything, you know? This is nice, you know, they look great, but there are times where, you know, times are lean. So you have to do, you know, some, some tricks or just to get your artwork better presented. And so I'm gonna show you some of those um, just quickies. And then I promise you I'll cut a mat and we'll oops, put a piece together. Hey everybody, thanks for joining. Um, just a fun fact about Wade. Um, Wade's first appearance at the Santa Fe Indian Art Market was in 2018, where he won first place in the drawing division. So um, I was there personally to witness that uh, it was pretty cool just seeing the emotion on Wade's face um, and see him standing by his ribbon. Uh, it's, it's a big honor to win at that art show. As some of you may know, uh, Santa Fe Indian Art Market um, is kind of the Super Bowl or the Oscars of the, the native uh, art world. So, all right, back to you, Wade. Thank you. Um, so just a quick thing. Um, I'm going to show you how to cut a mat, but you know, when when you do have booths or when you do want to um, sell online, you can always just, you know, once you learn how to cut a mat, you can put your um, artwork into standard sizes, and they have these cool little black bags. You can put your card in there, and they come in standard sizes. Um, and here's some of the standard sizes. Sizes. Can you see that? And um, you know, and if, if you will go bigger by 20 by 24, don't do it yourself. It's not worth it. Just take it to a framer or, you know, just think of a different way because um, these pieces like this size, when you're traveling, you know, you should, we'll add a stabilizer in the back, but they just get too wonky. So anything bigger than this, just, you know, think about framing it. And you can always Google standard sizes. And so what I did with these um, to make them fit within an eight by 10, I, um, you know, of course, adjusted the sides and everything to make them look, you know, more presentable. And as the artist, we can do this. And here's another one that I did. It's stabilizing that foam core. And you get these nice little bags. They're just, um, you have a little self-adhesive. You can do that, you know, do this, put them in there. And for these smaller ones, you know, I, should, I usually take pictures of my artwork. And so here's just another way of presenting. You know, you have a nice stabilizer, a mat board. You know, you, you get your image out there. It's a photograph, but excuse me, I normally sign the, um, the mat board. And again, they're standard sizes, so you can let your, um, you know, your client know that, you know, you can just go buy a five by seven frame and, you know, get it and put it on your wall, you know, because in picture framing, you know, people do want instant gratification sometimes. So this is the easy way of moving your artwork and getting your artwork out there to people. So that's a great little option, a great little inexpensive option to explore as far as um, not framing things. And then you can see like this, once I had a basic design down, I went ahead and had some frames made for going a bigger size. And um, I must give some great advice here. Learn who you're, get to know your local neighborhood framer. I mean, you can go to the big box um, stores, retail stores, but you're just not gonna get that, um, you know, the, the customer service you are with, you know, your, you know, your small, you know, your neighborhood framer. And a lot of the framers, they keep a lot of um, inventory in. 
you know, of molding. And they're looking to get rid of it because they had it forever. They couldn't move it. So I got a really great deal on this. Um, some of them were banged up, but you know, nothing but a paint marker would fix. And so I called this series the gold series. And I made the gold frames work with the art. And I framed, I think there was like 10 of them in this style. So, you know, get to know your local framer. And once you develop a friendship with them, they'll help you out. You know, they'll give you old mat board, old form course, scraps, discontinued stuff. So it's always good to, um, again, get to know them. And one larger one I'm gonna show you that um, I put in a, a bag. And this is just gonna teach us a little bit about, you know, presentation or a setup to framing. Um, one thing that I suggest is, Again, just you know, respect your art. And so I put this in a bigger bag. And one thing about when you frame art, um, it always has to be reversible. You know, you don't want anything permanent, that you know, works on paper. So you just want to have it be reversible. That means you know you can just um, take it apart. So I'm debagging this. This is a piece I did, I found, I did this in 1992 when I was screen printing t-shirts. I, you know, of course I was thinking I was Andy Warhol, but anyway, so this is what came out of the bag. You know, I just cut a nice little map for it. And then one thing I did in the beginning with my artwork, and this is something that I'm gonna express to you as all artists, um, see this masking tape? throw it away, don't use it. Just forget that ever existed because this is what happens when you use masking tape. You can see at the top here, there, um, there's some discoloration of the paper, which is the art. So again, respect your art. So I ended up taking it off and it does flake. And so I was fortunate not to really damage the print. Um, you know, again, there's some discolor, but I think I got it off in time. Then I just added a nice little hinging tape and I just hinged the piece. And that's just a quick way of showing, you know, your work and put them in, in those bags. And with this, you just wanna, you know, I, the bag was a little bit too big. I don't know. You just want to, you know, then you can just, I'm just going to show you for the bigger bag, slide it on in there, use the tape that I provide, and then you're closing it up and you're good to go. Put it in your bin at your booth, and that way it's not a perf it's not a custom size, but you can let the person know, you know, you paid for the mat board, you know, you paid for the, the foam core. And so all they have to do is take it to their neighborhood framer, get it framed. And people who buy art, they have a framer, you know, they trust them. So, you know, they'll take it to their framer and everybody's happy. So um, yeah, normally it's not a standard size. I let them know. Hey, wait. Yes. Um, we have a Stephanie Reiner. She'd like to know if you have a, a photo of the piece that won in 2018 at Swaya. You have that on hand or maybe we could share it with her in a little while yeah i can share that with you right now or not right now but at a later date but um yeah most definitely and brian will give me the information and i'll send it on out thank you Rick. you're welcome so now you know i showed you a little bit of um you know a little bit of uh framing that i've done you know how to you know how to start your framing you know just simple with the bags and what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna actually um, cut a mat for that piece I was designing. And this is a mat cutter. I mean, this is rolling reses and um, it's a good start, one to start and to learn and to get the feel of, um, you know, cutting your own mats. 
you know, it's pretty easy. I think um, something like this runs around $100, $120. Um, they do have bigger and better ones, of course, you know, where they top to like um, 600. Then you get into electrical, um, computerized mat cutters. And the place I worked in in Boston, they had, um, they did it still old style work. You, whoops, where you would cut the mat yourself. So um, you know, I'll show you how to do that. But um, yeah, so you can pick up one of these and it is an investment in the beginning. And I'm just letting you know too, I'm just giving you some ins and outs here. And one of the ins too is like, if you need some mat cut and you don't know how, go to your local framer again, you know, buy the mat from them, tell them you need this. And they'll work with you and it's just a mat, they'll cut it for you. I mean, there's a fee involved, but you know, you'll get a sense of how the framing starts and the costs. And, you know, when I started designing and I would give people a cost, you know, some people just didn't know what to expect. And they would say, um, oh, I, my dad has a saw, you know, I'm like, well, okay, your dad has a saw, that's great. But anyway, um, so, what I'm going to do is, um, yeah, so this is a nice little mat cutter. And one thing too, I threw away that um, masking tape. When you start to frame, only keep pencils by your work area. No pens, because pens can like um, color your frame. You know, you get it all framed and you know, I've had this done and a ballpoint pen gets on it or or heaven forbid to get on any art, you know, it was, you know, you don't want that to happen because again, you got to respect your art. And so um, it's always a pencil, never a pen. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a map cut for the piece we designed. And again, this is just, um, you can take these suggestions. I'm giving you some ideas. Um, again, I'm, I'm probably whizzing right through this, but um, kind of have to, you know, we just, I'm, I'm trying to get as much in as I can for you folks. And so what I did is I pre-measured this and um, I cut a mat and I already drew the lines. So how that works is, um, Everybody, you should probably get a still rule. That's always one of the things that's good to have when you're framing. Um, I usually leave, I'm gonna leave a half inch all around, all around the art. So I have the opening at 16 and 5 eighths. And then 11 and a quarter. And one thing with framing, you always, I learned you always measure um, horizontal first, landscape, if you will, or whatever, then vertical. So I have an opening size here. I don't know if you can see it, 16 and 5 eighths by 11 and a quarter. And what I did is I'm going to put these in, um, and everybody should have one of these, a little handheld measuring device. Um, So this is actually, um, it's not a standard size, but at the same time, I just wanted to get something. So when I put this in a bag, it's, the bag ain't gonna lay on the art because the bag will, I don't fix, I don't use a fixative on my art. So I just go ahead and um, I wanna create something that is not touching my art. So then what I'll do is this thing has, I'm not sure about the visual here, but this thing has a little measuring device here. You know, if you want to do an inch all the way around your mat, and that's just for you to measure. Brian, can they see this? Yes. Okay. So this will just, you know, you set it at one inch, and that means you're going to have a one inch all the way around. No, actually, I, I said that wrong. It's the outside. Each mat cutter is a little bit different. So I just got a little mixed up. No worries. So I'm going to have a two inch mat. 
which is pretty standard, you know, and you just have your pencil and you're just gonna draw two inches all the way around. And this one, I'm used to going this way, but like I said, each mat board, each um, mat cutter is a little different. So I'm gonna go this way. And they always have a marking to where you're gonna let up so you don't have crossed, so you're, you don't have overcuts on your mats. I mean, any framer, that's not a good thing to have, you know? And so I, you know, I, I've learned all this in the beginning. Then I kind of just became a fitter. And that's when you're taking all the pieces together, all the ingredients, and making a you know, making a frame piece. So yeah, this is a little different. You always want to make sure you have a sharp blade. And this is called a slip sheet. You always want to have something underneath your mat when you cut. And use the line on the side. And let up right when you come to the line. And this is a little thicker mat. This actually has a weave for it. I don't like this. I just grabbed something. So sorry about that, but I'll get a Another mat here. Yeah, this is good. Actually, I'll just cut this. Sorry about that. So I'll just cut this mat. That gave you the basic idea. And then with this, I already drew this on here, so I'm just gonna eyeball it. And what I'm doing is a framer gave me a whole bunch of discontinued mats and to cut costs, I'm just using the white side of the mat. You have like the colored side, you know, the colored side and then the back side. So the back side is normally white, sometimes it's off white. And then you can just, um, again, you, that'll be the top of the mat. And I think I had these at, one and a half. I'm actually going to set this to one and a half just to make my cuts easier. And again, you want to have a slip sheet. Use your markings. Lift up. And what's, you know, I was just so fortunate to fall into framing, you know, and I'm like, you know, sometimes I'm like, how am I ever going to use that framing? And I'm using it in my business now. You know, I know how to do all this. So it just helps with the cost. And again, you know, it's a matter of you, you know, again, doing a lot of your own business, which I think, you know, is cool. And, um, you know, so I'm glad I know how to frame it. If you know, you can see how the inner just fell out of there, right? So you can use this for, you know, save all your scraps. You know, you can, you know, use this for a mat board. You can, um, you know, like when I make those photos, you know, you can cut them smaller and put your photo on there. So save your scraps, that's important. Sometimes you get too much scraps, but that's all right. So this is how this ends up looking. You know, I did put a mat around it. And what I'm gonna do now real quick for you, is I'm gonna raise this mat. And this is another thing that's good to have is um, foam pour. And save all your scraps because that's what you can use this for. And another thing to think about using is ATG tape. It's a double-sided tape. And it mainly just 
work for you like this. You can just put your tape down. Put this on here. You do all sides. And again, I'm doing this so my bag won't touch my art, my clear bag. And you can always just, um, you know, go to, um, I usually do online, um, Dick Blick. Um, you know, I always like to support the local frame shops. You know, they are a little bit more expensive, but I just think, you know, it helps to support our own community. Let me take this off. That was my starting one. I'm making a pinwheel. And again, you can find these artists like, you know, the ATG tape, it comes in two different sizes. You, both, you need both of them. You know, always keep, um, a nice sharp um, exacto knife. These are really cool looking, aren't they? So there's, you know, instead of working with just, you know, a single, you know, like it being a pencil, it actually gives you a little bit more grip. So there, I have my pinwheel. And what I'm going to do is use my slip sheet for my mat cutter, and I'm going to cut the foam core off. So this. And don't try and cut it all at once. It's okay to score it, you know, because you want a nice clean cut, you know, so just score it and then cut. Whoops. And then once your blade, once it starts tearing up your mat board or your foam core, change the blade. I mean, it takes, you know, 20 seconds and it's better than, you know, messing up on your investment, you know, your paper and your, Phone for your, you know, your mat board. So then you can see, I just kind of made a rise, we call them. And then um, I'm gonna keep them in the corners. We're waiting for a question. Sure. Uh, Molina would like to know what's your favorite piece of art that you framed? Besides your own, of course. <laughs> um, I think the most, for me, I honestly think it was Russell Means. I mean, and to have it done by Andy Warhol. And these things were huge. They were like 40 by 40. And, um, you know, as I'm talking to you about right now, I'm getting the chills. But it was just a matter of me being in a, you know, in this world where I didn't get to see a lot of native people and to have that come across my um, table or my job ticket, you know, that really, that was probably one of my favorite pieces, you know, to frame. Um, I always, you know, one of my favorite stories to tell, you know, we framed so many war halls, we call them boar halls because <laughs> there was just so many and, it, you know, it was work and, you know, work is work sometimes, you know, we're not gonna lie. So see how I did that? Made a nice little raise, you know, the collector can take it to their framer, you know, they can, you know, add a nice, you know, you got all that done, you know, then you have a nice little frame for that. So that's how that works. And then the framer um, can make it their choice as far as how they're gonna attach the art. And we're just going to move on to attaching something real quick. I'm kind of running out of time, but um, so that's just something like that. Then I put it in a bag. Uh, just a fun tip about Wade. Another fun fact is uh, Wade was recently featured in Hyper Allergic. It's an online art publication. Um, as one of the five artists to look out for 
from uh, Santa Fe Indian Market. So I think what I'm gonna do, um, I was gonna cut a map for this. This was a piece I just finished not too long ago. And I was gonna give it, this is the, the stable, you know, the stabilizer in the back. But this would, this would look like this. So that's what I was gonna do, but I'm gonna try to move on to something real quick here. But, um, also, just another thing to invest your money in is linen hinging tape. It's worth it. It's expensive. Your art's expensive. Your art is worth it. So this is a great investment. And what I was gonna do, it has a little bit of um, fabric to it. And it's self-adhesive. What you do with this, you can, we're gonna hinge it. So I just usually put two I don't know what you guys can see, but can you see that? Okay. And then I did, I cut my fingernails, so of course, can't get it off. But anyway, it requires two hinges. And what I'm going to do, of course, it's not a very big piece, so I can just use this, cut it in half. And this is probably the most economical way of framing your artwork, you know, is hinging. And what that does, that'll set, I'm just using what I just cut. You just attach this. You just attach it on the back like that. And then another tool to invest in is a, be a burnishing bone. And it's like this. You know, because you don't want your artwork to slip. And sometimes with that with that masking tape, it's gonna fall. So and that doesn't look good for you as the artist, because if you do this much work and you tell them all they have to do to take it is take it to their framer they have it on the wall and your artwork will slip, you know, they're gonna remember that. So do it right the first time. So that's how that's gonna work, but just to show you. Um, Wait, we have another question. Sure. Um, what are your thoughts on the framing cutters from Hobby Lobby or Michaels? I know you're using one right now. Um, or do you suggest buying professional framers items? Well, as far as items or materials, like are you talking about the frame? I guess just both, maybe. Okay, I would just invest in the money first with one with a higher quality. And I've done it too. I mean, I've, I've been looking out for the best way to save money in framing. And you get really creative and a lot of times you're just trying to get too creative and it's, it's a big headache. So that's when I decided, you know, you know, it's time to invest in money. But I've been going, you know, I used to go to, you know, um, like thrift stores and going through their frames and finding a good frame and, you know, taking it apart and putting my artwork in there. But then, you know, I cut the mat and everything like that. But anyway, so yeah, I just think, you know, you need to invest in you know, some, you know, some money, you know, to do it right. And I'm not gonna have time to um, show you how to do this, but I was gonna show you how to frame this, but we're just gonna pretend that it's already in here. And again, I got this frame for free, you know, I was gonna frame it in here. And then, so you have your glass. And I can go on to tell you the different types of glass, but. You know, I just want to show you some other things real quick. And this is the foam pour. And this is a good tool to have. It's called a um, Fletcher 
and you're going to spend like 80 to 100 bucks on this, but it's worth it. They last a long time and they're filled with um, these points. You do, you just put it in there. And this is what holds your picture in. You know, that's what holds it in. And then, you know, normally, you know, you think that's enough, but you know, always want to. So something like that. So that's keeping your picture in. And then this is again the ATG tape. I'm just going to pretend that it's in here. This will be your backing. And again, you know, like this this tape here, you can find some like, you know, at a local hardware store, but I just find that it doesn't work as well as quality picture framing ATG tape. Um, you know, it's used a lot, especially for print paper or finishing your projects. Um, Wait, yes. what was that last tool that you used, that staple gun, what's that called? It's called a Fletcher. Fletcher? Fletcher. And another, a good source to get framing supplies is United Manufacturing Supply, UMS. And then, so got that tape on there and this is the paper. We'll go like this. It's called a dust, oops, a dust cover. And they have these little fancy tools, but I always use, like to use a blade, you know, single edge, of course. Then you get, this is with experience. You can just cut alongside there, take it off. Or another way I like to do it is from underneath. But you gotta make sure your blade is sharp. That's not gonna work. Because the back is just as important as the front. So we got that, we got paper. And again, I'm going through this really quick. These are little hangers. And another investment is a grip. This one's a little bit heavier because most frame shops, you know, they do all kinds of things, you know, build things, but they do have lighter ones. And those are just as good. And you always measure a third down. So 17, so five, I'll do four and a half. No, I'll do five, five and a half. Both sides. Got some little screws. And here's some cu couple different hangers for bigger pieces. Um, sometimes you have to pre drill, but most of the time you're okay with just drilling it in. And we've all done it before. I've done it. Sometimes you get a long screw and you go through the front of the front of the frame. So watch your screws, because you're in a hurry usually when you're framing, especially for yourself. And sometimes the customer's waiting, so you gotta act profesh. And then you gotta, so this is the wire, and this wire looks thin, but it'll hold up to 20 pounds. And you don't wanna tie them in a knot, you just wanna work over, under, and out, and wrap. And you wrap it about, the last company I worked for, we were so like, you know, we were at precision framers. So we would wrap all the spitters, we had to wrap it about 15 times to be consistent, you know, to have the same look on each of the piece that went out, out of the shop, you know, because galleries and collectors, you know, they look for that stuff, you know, they don't want to have to worry about it. Um, I framed for Elton John, I framed for David Bowie. I frame for Pat Benatar, just name dropping. So, yeah. So then you have this. So simple framing wiring technique. You know, imagine the pictures there, my hand maybe. And there you go. That's just a simple way of framing. Um, so if you guys ever want to reach out to me, I mean, you can find me on social media. 
and um, I'll be more than happy to help you with any kind of framing questions. And so I know I tried to do as much as I could and I thought hour was a lot, but there's just so many different types of things you can do with framing and it always changes. So um, on that note, I think um, I wanna just take this time for thanking you for joining in. Um, again, I hope you guys gain some knowledge and just trying to um, get your work to a better presentation. And believe me, do those bags first, you know, get your work seen, get them out there, cut some mats, learn how to cut your mats first. And then this framing part, it'll come because, you know, you gotta think about glass, you gotta think about hanging, you know? So it's just all those other things that as an artist, you don't want, right now, I don't think you really need to think about that stuff. We need to make things happen for ourselves to get our work out there, to get our names out there, and you know, keep doing what you're doing, keep drawing and doing art. So thanks a lot and um, we'll see you soon. We'd have one more question before we sure. wrap up. Um, was it ATG tape or AG? ATG tape. Okay, excellent. And they do sell those. I don't know if they sell them at Hobby Lobby or Michael, but just go ahead and you know, order from Amazon, you know, just, Get, get your nice little package going and, you know, and um, I think you can watch this video later, but yeah. So again, thank you. And um, yeah, so. All right, um, thank you, Wade. That was super helpful to see. Um, such an important step in preserving your work and getting the show ready. And I think sometimes we forget to take that extra step in presentation and it can make all the difference in selling it to a collector or when entering a jury category for our art show. Um, like Wade said, you can find him on Instagram at Wade underscore Patton and also here on Facebook, Wade Patton. Um, thanks everybody for joining us tonight. Um, please come back and see us here at First People's Fund's Facebook page. Um, we have more upcoming events, Native Artist Professional Development Training and other good to know resources. Also follow us on Instagram and Twitter. And you can also visit our website at www.firstpeoplesfund.org to find out more about our programs, resources, and upcoming events. And again, I'm Brian Parker, the Program Manager of Rolling Arts Arts. And I appreciate everyone of you tuning in. And please take care of one another and be safe out there. And let us all continue to celebrate our creative voices. Good night.